Pew, pew. Hi. Welcome to another episode of The J Situation. This is a tabletop review of the Pulsar Axion Key XM30 thermal spotting monocular. Note that this monocular can be used during the day or the night. In the box, you get the owner's manual and warranty card and the Axion, which comes in this pretty cool pouch. Uh, Pulsar stuff usually comes in pretty durable cases that you can use in the field, and this one is no different. So let's open it up. So it's open like that. You have your transformer for charging the battery. The Axion unit itself. Standard Pulsar micro USB cable for use with the charger. And you have a pretty typical lens cloth. The case is pretty cool. Um, has pockets and things for your stuff. Kind of has everything you need and nothing you don't. So a quick overview of Pulsar. Um, Pulsar is a Lithuanian brand from the parent company Yukon Advanced Optics. Uh, in the United States, uh, Cellmark, which is near Dallas, uh, distributes the Pulsar brand. Um, Pulsar offers a variety of products, including Gen 2 Night Vision, actually, and thermal devices, which it's very well known for. Um, I've previously re reviewed several Pulsar thermal imaging devices on my channel, so you can check out those videos if you like. In general, products from Pulsar are priced very competitively, and the customer service is very good. Um, I will say that my experiences have been good, and the customer service here in, in the United States is handled by Cellmark in Dallas, and uh, those are pretty good folks, and they respond to inquiries very quickly. So. Fairly quickly, um, let's go over how the Axion uh, Thermal works. Um, you can kind of think of the Axion series as miniaturized helium monoculars um, without the modular objective lens, so you cannot remove the objective lens. Um, this device, like other uh, thermal optics, detects medium to long wave infrared radiation. It uses a micro bolometer to translate those wavelengths into electrical resistance and then software in the unit shows you an image on the screen through the eyepiece. Uh, that's the basic principle of operation with consumer thermal products. The Axion line uses Pulsar's new 12 micron core but the sensor is 320 by 240. Um, Although they have the technology for the 12 micron 640 and higher resolution, uh, they chose to go with 12 micron 320 uh, right now, and so that's what we get with the Axions. Um, more about the performance later. So this is the Axion key. Um, specifically, it's the XM30 uh, Axion key. It's not the bottom of the line Axion um, in the lineup, but it's second from the bottom. Uh, the key line is differentiated from the higher end axions by its cheaper screens. So that's the screen you're going to look at uh, through the viewfinder here. Uh, the lack of onboard video recording and the non-inclusion of a separate battery charger. So you can charge the battery by plugging in the device, although you can purchase a separate charger as well, um, which is you know the same one that comes with the higher end models. So let's go over all the components of the Axion. The XM30 key has a 24 millimeter diameter objective lens with a 30 millimeter focal length. Uh, the native optical magnification is 2.5x, uh, similar to the Helion XP50 actually uh, in magnitude. Um, the lens cover is attached to the hand strap lanyard uh, and has a small magnet encased in a rubber material. So you can kind of see uh, the magnet in there. Um, so that's so you can flip it back <laughs> like this, and it's pretty slick. 
it sticks to the hand strap because the hand strap contains a small steel shim and therefore uh, is magnetic. And so this, which is probably a neodymium magnet, sticks on there and it's kind of out of the way. Um, this is very clever and it's extremely convenient and I like it a lot. The little details like this are par for the course with Pulsar um, in general with their products and it's something that I, I think deserves to be mentioned. The objective lens focus here, um, which is a great feature to have, especially on lower end thermal optic, not all lower end thermal spotting optics have objective focus, so that's pretty cool. Um, it, it operates very smoothly. It's not quite as easy to turn as the one on the Helion, but it's definitely not difficult at all, and the, the knurling on the side here is super easy to grip, so you don't get a lot of resistance. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the way this works. Um, I always find myself using thermal optics dynamically in the field, so I appreciate Pulsar's attention to the tactile feel and operation of the focus ring. Um, I use the focus ring a lot um, on my Helion. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine not having focus. That would not be good. Um, below the objective focus ring, you'll find the battery compartment release button. Okay, um, if you press this button, the rechargeable battery uh, will pop out. So I'm going to press it, and now you have the battery. Um, the included battery is the APS-3. Let's see if I can hold it up there. You can see that? All right. Um, it has a capacity of 3,200 milliamp hours. Um, note that this battery can also work with the new line of Thermion thermal weapon sights that Pulsar just released. Um, and at the time of this video, actually, the, the Thermion is, is released in North America in shipping. So, uh, you know, if you want to check that out, um, now would be the time to do that. Um, so this is a 3,200 milliamp hour battery. And there are also 2,000 milliamp hour batteries, uh, which are designated the APS-2 in contrast with this um, APS-3. And so those smaller batteries work with the Thermion rifle scopes, but they're too short to work in the Axion. Um, the, though they will fit inside. So this, the APS-3, is long enough. Um, and so the smaller APS-2 will not engage the contacts um, in the end of the, the Axion, so don't try to use that. Um, in there. Um, so the APS-2 is of no use to you if you own an Axion. Um, note that the battery does have a proper orientation for installation signified by a matching white dot on the end of the battery here and on the body of the Axion here. Note that the bottom of the battery and the top of the battery are also ribbed in a different fashion. So you got this like wider ribs here um, on the top and then uh, narrow for the bottom. Despite these warnings and help that Pulsar has given, um, it is possible to shove this battery um, into the Axion body upside down. So that would be like if you had the dot and you flipped around like that accidentally because you were in the dark and you forgot how it goes. See, it doesn't really go in, but if you really wanted to, you could shove it in there. And um, trust me, uh, I've seen it done. And don't do it because if you do it, it's a pain in the ass to get it out of there. Um, but you, you, you really have to try to do it wrong. Um, it's not easy to mess this up. But I just wanted to mention it because I've, I've learned that people can break anything. It, it's really not hard to do this right. You, you have the dot here, you got the dot there, and it'll drop in. And then 
it seats. I can press this again and take it out. The battery has an O-ring here on the end to seal the system, okay? So uh, that is good because it's actually IPX7 rated. So what that means is that you can dunk this um, in one meter of water depth and have the unit completely submerged for up to half an hour and the unit should be undamaged. So although you don't want to go swimming with this thing, um, if you were to drop this in a puddle uh, or, you know, a water trough or, or you know, off the boat, <laughs> you better hope that you can get to it in time. Um, you can use it in the rain and, you know, wet conditions and that's really, I think, the thrust here and you have no worry of it uh, getting messed up. So for all intents and purposes, it's waterproof. Um, you just don't want to go swimming with it. When you insert the battery back into the unit, so you're going to feel, or you're going to hear a little clunk. So that's that seating and that button is engaging the retention mechanism of the battery. Um, make sure you double check it. This method of battery retention is more passive than with the other thermals from Pulsar, like the Helium and Trail, which have levers. Uh, be mindful of what you're doing. You, you don't wanna have the battery fall out in the field or something, but it's pretty easy to insert. Like I said, uh, sort of, you know, you match the dot, drop in, press, you're engaged. So it seems simple, but it is different than what you might be used to seeing, so just keep that in mind. Underneath the battery release button on the bottom of the site or the monocular, you have a quarter inch diameter, 20 threads per inch, female threaded receptacle for tripod, or other mounting purposes. This is awesome. Um, and something we've come to expect from Pulsar actually on their monoculars, it's good stuff. Uh, I'm waiting for someone to uh, helmet mount this. Um, it's kind of light, so, you know, game on. Uh, on the left side of the unit here, there's a small rubber cover. And when you remove it, you can see the micro USB uh, connector, the female connector there in the body. Um, note that since this is an Axion key and not the full featured Axion, this port only functions to charge the internal battery and perhaps update the firmware. Um, on the higher end Axions, this would also function to download recorded photos and video. Note that you can use the same uh, cables as you would with the Helion and the Trail thermals. Um, and actually, the, the, the cable that comes with this um, is, is the same as the Helion Trail here. And you can see that it has this, this keyed shape, you know, with the, the round edge and then the, the flat edge. But unlike the Helion and Trail, the port does not have the key shape. So um, because of that, the, the reason I mentioned that detail is it, you might, and if you're fumbling in the dark, you might have this in the wrong orientation. So just be careful and be mindful of that. Um, I sort of wish that Pulsar went with USB-C, which is orientation independent, but at the same time, I'm glad I didn't because I can use my other thermal cables that I have on hand. Uh, I don't know. There are adapters too, so you know you might be able to adopt, adopt USB-C to the other one and yada yada. Um, so I think, I think my vote would still be USB-C if, if I had my choice. Um, so in the future, I, I think they should do that. Uh, but just be glad it's not proprietary like an iPhone connector or something because that, that's no good. Okay, so I can take the lens cap and... Put it back on. Uh, I talked about the hand strap earlier. 
This is similar to the one used on the Helion. Uh, these things are awesome and definitely helpful when you're riding on a four-wheeler at night and you're bouncing around with one eye through the thermal and the other night blind from your night vision or thermal scope and you're trying not to die, but most importantly, trying not to drop your thermal and run it over uh, because then you would have to buy more money to, to, to buy another one. So that, that's not good. Um, so be, you know, thankful that you have the strap. You know, it, it keeps it secure. So I really like that. On top of the monocular body, you have all the buttons. Um, moving forward to aft, you have the power button, the up button, the menu button, and the down button. Uh, the functions of these buttons are very similar to those on the Helium monoculars. One really cool thing I like about this is the power LED. Um, it is in that little hole, so if I turn it on, let's see if you can see it. Yeah, you see it glowing green? That's cool, right? It's right there. It would be a lot um, easier to see if it was dark in here, but it's not. Um, it glows green when a unit is on, and it, it glows red if your battery charge level drops below 10%. So that's super cool. Um, I like how small it is. So the light signature probably won't give your position away at night. When I was using it out in the field, I I wasn't feeling like I was casting a, a huge beam somewhere or something. So that was pretty dope. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. So just like the just like the helium of the trail, you you press the power button. I'm looking through the display here. I'm gonna hold it down. It display counts down, and you once the countdown reaches zero, uh, it turns off. If you let go of the power button before the countdown reaches zero, it goes into display standby mode, and you can you can um, save some battery power. Uh, one thing I should say while I'm talking about the power button, the software on the Axion and also on the new Thermion models from Pulsar is improved, and the startup time is super quick. Uh, the Pulsar units already started up fairly quickly, but now it's super, super quick. So uh, I, I think that's pretty neat that they were able to do that. Um, so further aft on the, the, the body here, you have the ocular focus knob. All right, that's a little harder to turn than the objective focus, but you're not gonna be adjusting that nearly as much. Um, it's good because, you know, everyone has different eyesight and this allows you to get a good look at the screen. Okay, so let's talk about the screen. The screen on the two Axion key models is a different type than on the higher end Axion keys and the Helion and the Trail and the, and the um, the, the Thermion, Thermals. Um, the Axion Key have liquid crystal on silicone displays. So that's, um, it's a 960 by 720 resolution. And the higher end Axions have a uh, Active Matrix Organic LED, which I prefer by far. That's the same screen in the, in the Helion and the Trail. Um, Pulsar did this to save money with, with the, uh, Axion key units, and that's fine because I know how you know many folks are concerned about cost. Uh, however, keep that in mind when you're when you're deciding uh, between the key and the regular Axion. Um, there are some other things to highlight about the body. You you have lanyard holes on the left side as well. So, so if you want to switch your strap to the left side for left-handed use, you can do that. Um, the bottom of the unit has a texturized um, rubber portion um, that makes it kind of non-slip when you're gripping it. Um, and, and given the, the unit's overall small size, uh, you know, even though you have the strap, it's a welcome detail to have that, that kind of that texturized grip. So, you know, when I'm grabbing this, 
I swear, this feels like a compact rangefinder in my hand. And that, I mean, that's the first thing I noticed when, when I, I've been playing with these things for, gosh, all year really. Um, and, and it's just really, it's a really great compact package. And these little details are great. Um, they say that the, the body's a magnesium alloy and I guess it's shrouded in polymer. Um, it feels really solid, just like all the other Pulsar stuff. Um, I, anytime I pick up a Pulsar Thermal, I don't think I'm going to break it. And uh, I haven't yet, and I've beaten mine up pretty pretty well in the field. So, uh, you know, overall, um, it, it's kind of... It's kind of what we expected as far as build quality, which is very pleasing. So a little bit about the Axion Key XM30's performance. Prior to playing with this in the field, I looked through the other Axion models, um, including this one. Uh, I did that in, in, at trade shows, so in air-conditioned space um, with, with Cellmark. Um, since this one has the same native magnification as my Helion XP50, I took it out in the field with that monocular too, and my Trail LRF XP50, and did some night hunting. Uh, I even had the Sightmark Wraith digital night vision scope that night. Uh, I was kind of it's kind of a cornucopia of testing that night. Um, when you use this in the field, it's immediately clear that the lower end Axion key is no match for the Helion XP50. Um, even, with the, the, uh, even with the 12 micron core in the Axion, it, it has a smaller objective lens, which you can get away with if you use a smaller pixel pitch in the thermal core. Um, but I think that the 24 millimeter lens size, coupled with the cheaper screen, exacerbates the differences between the two monoculars. Um, note that the Axion key is a fraction of the cost however, which makes sense. Um, the night was humid, but the Pulsar image algorithms tend to do well in high humidity. Um, and I could still locate all the thermal objectives I was locating with the Helion and Trail, but the clarity was just not up to par of what I'm used to. But, you know, I'm using the flagship uh, monocular and the flagship weapon sight from Pulsar. So um, I'm, I guess I'm kind of spoiled. Uh, but I just want to give you that relative comparison. Um, I view the Axion Key unit as something for closer range use at a lower cost and excellent for someone just getting into thermal. However, I'm really not a fan of the LCOS display. Um, I, not only is the clarity uh, qu not quite what it is on the... Uh, the ammo LED displays, but it seems smaller in the viewfinder. And so it just, the overall viewing experience to me is not as pleasing. Um, if you have the money, I suggest stepping up to an Axion with a higher end ammo LED display because then you get a recording function too, which is awesome. And Pulsar has improved the recording functions over the Trail and Helion with a higher resolution video compression algorithm um, and standardized uh, MP4 codec so you don't have to convert those AVI files like before. Um, I'm not going to get too much into that right now because the Axion Key does not record video, but when I review the other high-end models, we can talk more about the recording functionality. Um, overall, I really liked uh, the Axion series. Um, out of all of Pulsar's new product lines, I'm most excited about this one due to the form factor. It's really incredible how small the overall unit is and what features they've packed into it. Uh, it it's great industrial design, as always, and it's very durable, and it's a high-end feeling product that should give you um, a lot of good, reliable uh, field use. I hope you enjoyed this tabletop review of the Pulsar Axion Key XM30. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can go to my website at thejsituation.com and listen to my podcast and check me out on all the social media links uh, you see there, especially Instagram, because that's where I'm the most active. 
Uh, let me know if you have any questions regarding this review uh, in the comments of the video. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Pew, pew.